If we used to go one on one and they add 66 and two thirds percent, I got 141 and two thirds chance of winning at sacrifice. See, Joe, the numbers don't lie. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. If I sound a little bit different, it's because I, I have a very bad throat today. One of my, well, I, he's not a nephew. He's a, he's, a, he's a younger cousin of my wife's. He was over here for a birthday we were celebrating, and he got everyone. I don't know. It's, it's, we're not really have the flu or anything like that. Everyone's just uh, got sore throats. So uh, if you see some cuts in this video, it's because I'm coughing profusely, and I wanted him to, not to be a part of the conversation. But there was some some tweets today that I did want to talk about from the legendary Jim Steranko, one of the really imaginative and, and great illustrators, who great story, visual storytellers in comic book history. One of the great what ifs in comic book history is what if Jim Steranko would have concentrated on comic books full time? Unfortunately, for comic book fans, uh, he's such a wonderful illustrator. And he understood the the art of illustration that he could basically jump through different mediums and everything. And uh, he always had his hands in lots of different pots and he, he has done comic work book work and uh, what is available is absolutely fantastic. But unfortunately there just isn't as much as I think we would all like. I do have this one comic book. I will talk about it before we get started called Marvel visionaries, Jim Steranko. This is the captain America story. He wrote in illustrated. And if you want to see visual storytelling at its finest, this is, this is absolutely bonkers. This is definitely worth your time and money. You can get it for I think I think it was fifteen bucks when it was when it was first. Put. Look at this double page spread. This thing is amazing. We got Captain America. Oh, so so good. So when Jim Stranko talks about art, you definitely listen. It's like uh, when Jim Shooter wants to talk about writing, you, you take uh, you take heed. And Stranko actually kind of dives in much more eloquently than I have and talks about some of the issues issues with visual storytelling, what I've called the dumbing down of the comic book medium to where we're no longer using the medium to its fullest. The best storytelling medium in the world, in my opinion, is not being utilized to its fullest. And Jim Steranko agrees with me. And he has a series of four tweets. It's actually longer than this. If you go to Jim Steranko's Twitter page where, where he tweeted this thing, it actually goes on a little bit longer than this. He has some examples of people that he says are top practitioners and I would go check that out if I were you, but I'm going to just check out these four tweets. I'll read them, give my thoughts, and then continue. This is the first one he says. This is the beginning. He says, Re recent conversation about contemporary comics. The dilemma is that the art has become better primarily because of the doors uh, open to top practitioners around the globe. They've escalated illustration to a new high in American com comics history, for which I'm deeply grateful. This is interesting. This actually backs up something. Um, I was, was it? I think it was my first interview with um, Aaron Lepresti when he talked about visual storytelling degrading throughout comics. And the way he explained it, and it's kind of backed up here by Jim Steranko, is that there are less opportunities for, for great illustrators for like, ads and stuff like that you know it, back in the day when you would open up a magazine there would be hand illustrated ads you know just to, to sell things or you you know you you would have all these opportunities for illustrators to work between mediums a lot of that stuff is actually done with computer graphics nowadays so you have this whole host of illustrators who would have been supplementing their income doing work in other mediums where those opportunities are not there and they've kind of drifted into comic books we are getting higher quality art just as far as technically speaking the art is better but the visual storytelling is degraded that's the way that Aaron Lepresti explained it to me I would definitely if you haven't checked out that particular interview go check that one out uh he was very insightful we this is about an hour it was about an hour long but I think it's definitely worth your time now Jim does uh, go in to explain this a little bit more as far as what his dilemma is however for all their good work and inspiration, the narrative design of panels and pages has generally deteriorated into chaos. Comic art demands and depends upon dramatic interaction between panels to generate maximum impact. Clarity on single and double page pages barely exists. 
Absolutely. When you go and read a lot of modern day comic books, it's just random scenes almost. There, there's almost no flow between them. There's almost there's rarely kinetic energy, which is a lot of what he's talking about when he says dramatic interaction. Illustrations, panels, uh, interactions between the characters in the illustrations themselves that are moving and pushing the story, the story forward with drama and conflict and resolution as the story goes along. And he's absolutely correct. You get a lot of characters standing around statically talking to each other, just providing exposition. You get a lot of jumping between scenes. There, there rarely ever is an actual good transition between comic scenes nowadays. Uh, the way they, they kind of transition is uh, you take whatever the person was saying or the narration from the previous panel and you finish it in the next scene as you transition. And that is now considered a comic book scene transition. Obviously, Jim Steranko, one of the great uh, comic book illustrators uh, in history, has noticed this as well. And it's really impacted the enjoyment of comic books. I still enjoy comic stories, but you know, when you see a, a, a comic book illustrated by Pepe the Raz, it stands out because as uh, my friend Eric Kennedy has said, he calls Pepe the Raz a hyper carry artist. He says any story that he gets a hand his, his hands on and illustrates it, he's going to elevate the quality of the storytelling through his uh, you know, kinetic energy that he puts on page, the wonderful illustrations, and the way that he moves the panels and moves the eye of the reader, and it enhances the quality of the story itself. Through his, just him being on the book makes the story more exciting and better executed. Uh, some of the other artists out there that you can think of would be Jorge Jimenez. He has essentially been carrying the carcass of James Tynan IV on Batman for months now. As you could see, it feels like James Tynan checked out of Batman and Fear State a long time ago. And Jorge Jimenez has done everything he can because he's absolutely a fantastic illustrator to bring excitement into what is a very, very boring comic book. Some of the other illustrators out there, obviously, a Greg Capullo would be a, another one that I would think of that absolutely enhances uh, and brings the drama and that impact within the, within the comic book pages. Jim Stranko continued, Every comics panel must connect and convey info to the reader for a story to work. That includes the panel before it and the panel after it. Essentially, every panel on the page must deliver maximum drama and every panel on both pages within the reader's vision. No dead space. Here, you know, kind of reiterating that things have to flow. There must be a, a story being told visually. When you think about, um, you know, comic books, Sure, the writer has a lot of work to do to express information in narration, express information through the text and whatnot. And certainly he writes the script that the artist is interpreting. But a vast majority of the story actually being told is the art itself. And the conflict pays out, plays out on the page, you know, panel to panel. Uh, if you go and check out that uh, Captain America story that I, I was looking at that uh, book, the v Marvel Visionaries, the Stranko story, you could go and, and read that comic book and skip the words and know what the story is. And it would probably be even more dramatic, you know, as you were just going through the page and um, as Jim Stranko pulls your eyes from one panel to the next, you know, in a very logical order. And it just gets more and more exciting until you get those wonderful payoffs at the end with Captain America kind of, um, you know, well, spoilers. Like, that that story is pretty old. You know, he ends up kind of faking his death because people know his, um, know his identity and stuff like that. He ends up returning and, and saving the Avengers and whatnot. And it's all very exciting. Today's comic books, for the most part, if you took the words out, you would be so lost as to what is actually going on, what the conflict of the story is, what the purpose of, of, of each page is. Because things are so randomly uh, placed in there and, and there's a, so disconnected in there. When you go and you read uh, that Jim Stranko Captain America story, you see exactly what he's talking about. That thing is action packed with drama, action packed with intrigue, and you can't put it down once you open it. And you don't feel that way about a lot of comic books today. Uh, this is kind of the last one that I'll talk about. 
But like I said, go check out his Twitter profile and, and see all the posts that he had on there because there's there's more information. I didn't want to go through every single one of the tweets. This is the last one. I thought this was per- perhaps the most important one. I have a hell of a time reading today's comics because the emphasis is not on storytelling, but figure drawing. Panel design is virtually non-existent. Tier design is imperceptible. Page design is a joke. And double page design, well, you get the idea. Without design, the story fails. And he's completely correct. That's one of the reasons, you know, that's one of the things I've been harping on and talking about. One of the, my biggest issues and that, that uh, I think has made comics less cool or less important is visual storytelling is gone out the window, the dumbing down of the medium. And graphic design and page layouts are so important for the story to build the tension or to convey you know, things that aren't in the script or maybe aren't even in part of the action, you know, on a horror seed or a horror book, when you start twisting the panels, you know, left and right, and you kind of discombobulate the reader, like you can do those things and give the the reader a feeling with the, the page. And I don't think that goes into the thought process of 95% of the comic book artists in today's industry. And that is absolutely you know, it's, it's kind of depressing when you tell people and you champion the comic book uh, industry and the comic book medium as the very best storytelling medium. And then when you go in there and you can see that there are so many people, so many artists today, they are not comic book artists. They're not visual storytellers. They are li- they are merely and that it's fine if you are an illustrator. And you have wonderful illustrations and your drawings are pristine and you're able to take, you know, the written word of the writer and make a very static, you know, boring display of what he's trying to, to put in there. So you can put some some uh, text, some thought bubbles and some narration in there and actually tell the story. You know, the writer should only be doing, you know, the words on the page should only be conveying maybe 30, 40 percent of the information. The real drama and the real amount of, of storytelling is within the character interactions. It's within the panel layouts. It's within the page designs as it pulls you through the story and gets you you know, involved in the story itself. Obviously, Jim Steranko is someone that definitely studied the art of visual storytelling, went back to some of the masters, and you can see it in the comic books that he did illustrate. I say go check out that Captain America. We just did a comic book retrospective on x where he illustrated two of the issues there, and you can definitely see it. It is just a difference as far as the craftsmanship, as far as the professionalism from from Jim Stranko as a comic book artist that is lacking in today's comic book industry. So I definitely wanted to talk about this and, uh, you know, uh, highlight what Jim Stranko was saying. Obviously, it is something that I've harped on and I've been – talking about here on the channel the dumbing down of the of the medium itself into being essentially you know proof of concepts for streaming shows or you know almost like storyboards that you would use to pitch a movie or a tv show rather than utilizing the very best storytelling method in the entire world that takes almost everything great you know other than than having uh you know in motion images, obviously, because they are static images, but it, it takes everything great from from television, movies, uh, you know, uh, books, uh, uh, you know, plays, whatnot, and then you know, it, you take all the constraints that come along with those, as far as budgets, you know, imagination. You could put whatever you want onto these pages, and you can you can tell the story in a way that best enhances what the writer is trying to get through with your page layouts, with your panel designs, with the execution of the story and making sure, you know, your double page spreads are super impactful that they're, that they're reserved for the most important moments in the comic book. That way, when you finally get it, it's like, boom, I just read something that was important. Go read. Uh, I'm going to, I've already crapped on James Tyne. Let's do it again. Go read. Something is killing the children. A book that I recommend because I like the story, whatnot. Go read that thing and check out the double page spreads in that. And tell me those are important. Tell me the double page spreads 
in something that's killing the children are impactful. They are not. And it's ridiculous that people have dumbed down the medium. They are not utilizing it. We have great uh, works from Jim Stranko. We have great works from Art Adams, from Neil Adams, from John Bird, from uh, from uh, Jack Kirby, and all these wonderful illustrators. Gil Kane, I, I could go on, on, and on. They they knew visual storytelling in and out. Will Eisner, the blueprints there, the work is there. You just have to go study it and realize what they were doing, why they were using their panel designs, why they were doing the layouts the way they were, why they were utilizing their double page spreads when they were using them and making them impactful. But people don't have time for that because we don't have comic book artists a lot of times working on our comic books. We have illustrators. So the illustrations are good, but it's all taken up, you know, back, or essentially visual story taking, storytelling is taking a back seat is almost, uh, you know, it's an afterthought nowadays. And that can't work in a medium like comic books. So those are the words of Jim Strink. I did want to point it out there because he's highlighting something I've been trying to emphasize here on the channel. Obviously, he does it much better. And he certainly knows more about visual storytelling than I ever will. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news, and reviews. And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.